MMA Odds Breaker, I'm Frank Trigg. Today on the phone we get to talk to Will Comenzano, who actually is a late replacement for Vaughn Lee coming in against Andrew, um, yeah, Anthony Pettis, coming in against Sergio Pettis, excuse me, on uh, UFC 167 coming up here pretty quick. Will, how you doing, bud? I'm doing great. You just got into uh, Las Vegas, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, this is your second stint with the UFC. First time didn't go very well. You're battling against a guy yeah. that's got a lot of name recognition because it's, because his, he has the same last name as his brother. What yeah, is, but I mean, I've been hustling, man. I've been working. I've been grinding, you know, out, out in these these streets, and uh, I fought a lot of tough fights, and you know, I'm the best, and I've proven it. And uh, he's just kind of been spoon fed, so he's gonna come. To, realize soon what a real fight is. You know, you're on a five-fight win streak right now. Uh, you had two losses in a row, one to Nick Pace and next, one to Chris uh, Coloso. And, you know, the Nick Pace fight, fight was kind of a weird one. You got caught in a late submission. But then you fought a really, really tough decision loss to Chris. And since then, you've been on a terror. Submission, KO, TKO, decision, decision. Your last fight against uh, Tokoro was a split decision but probably the best I've ever seen you fight. And that was in Valley Tudo, Japan, uh, back in, in the beginning of October. You've come a long yeah, way, I mean, like a long way since I was commentating your fights. What's been going on with you? How come you have such a huge the, progression as of late? The thing about it, I didn't start MMA until I was 20, and I'm coming from a non-athletic background. So I started everything, and I got picked up by the WC when I was 23. I was in the UFC when I was 24. So I was too green, too immature to really understand that I wasn't ready. And I was just taking fights just because I'm like, I'm young and tough. But, you know, I've, I've put the time in, i put the, you know, I got dedication. I've been responsible and I've been training and, man, I'm, I feel like I'm come full circle. So, and that's the difference now that I'm, you know, I got the experience, I got the training and it's just, you know, it's good. What about the the media machine and the and the the effect of coming out, you know, to uh, to a bunch of fans that you're gonna see at MGM when you fought? Your last time that you lost back to back was with the UFC. The the first fight was the Ultimate Fighter 12 finale, and then you fought Fight for the Troops Part Two. And these are big events that you fought in. Pettis hasn't had this yet. Sergio hasn't had these big these big moments. Do you think a lot of that pressure is gonna be on him when he comes out there to that and cage? He's he's in a pressure cooker. And how I know because I've, I've been him. I've been Pettis. I've been that young and the guy. You know, he's got in fact he, it's you know, that's times too because he's people already have a big expectations of him. And so you know what I'm saying, like it's gonna be hard for him to be in a fight. You know, in a fight like he's gonna be in a fight Saturday. There, the big difference, obviously, is your experience level. You have a lot more experience than him. He's only nine and zero. You're thirteen and four. You've been in the UFC before, which gives you another experience edge coming in. But he's one of those well, kids. That, Go ahead. Well, the thing is, I, I mean, I've I, I had these past fights, five fights, and after the UFC. But I mean, it's been. I mean, I mean, I've been grinding. These these have been all undefeated top prospects. You know, I'm just, I haven't been just fighting no ones or cans. Like, I've been working, and I'm taking a lot of risks. And, uh, you know, he just has, like, he just doesn't have an understanding of what that is. And, uh, you know, so it's a lot. Do you think, think do you think he's ready and prepared for the amount of heat he's going to be taking when he comes into these things? Mm. Do you think he's, he's gonna be ready for all the? He's gonna be ready for all of this coming in, all the, the big media and the big crowd and the big on that. You know, he's he's running around with his brother quite a bit and being in the background when his brother fights. But it's totally different when you're the lead guy. You know, it's totally different when you're going out. Nah, there he's not gonna be ready. And, and you know this because you fought. I mean, it takes time to develop yourself as a fighter to you know kind of shut everything out and really perform and be present. Like it just doesn't happen. You know, like he's too young to be that selfish. Yeah, he doesn't have that experience. He didn't have like 150 amateur boxing fights. You know, so I don't know. And just because I've, I've been in, so. Now, you you said you've been grinding, but it's, it was a 10 day short notice fight. How how deep in the training camp were you before you, before, you know, oh, when they I called mean, you? Said, hey, come on, take this I'm, fight. I'm nowhere near where I should be. I know that. And uh, I think everyone else knows that. Uh, there's not much you can do in three days. But, uh, 
you know, at this point, I've been I've been in so many bad situations in my life with fights and injuries, and like this is just nothing different. You know, I know when it when it comes to fight night, I know I'll perform, and uh, I'll do what I have to do to win. And I, I'm just not gonna, you know, try to win the round. I'm gonna try to win every second. I'm gonna try to win every minute. And uh, he's just not ready for that. Now, there, obviously, the, the one advantage he's going to have over you is that he's been prepping for a fighter, but he wasn't been prepping for you. Von Lee and you are two different complete fighters. One, you know, Von is left-handed and you're, you're orthodox. So it's a very different game, a very different style that he's getting ready to fight for, that he was training for. And you've kind of been always, like, a lot of the guys you fight are kind of like Anthony, you know, or, or Sergio Pettis kind of clones, you know, where they're, they're, they're that kind of style, that kind of pacing. That so you just by your experience level have, are ready for a guy like this, even though you took it on short notice. Was there anything said by the UFC? Hey, you're doing us a favor. Don't worry about it. No matter what happens in this fight, win, lose, or draw, we're definitely gonna take care of you for the next fight. No, I'm definitely taking a risk. You know, talking about performance and that could happen from being such a short notice, and not being sufficiently ready. I mean, mentally, I'm ready, but you know, whether or not my body will carry me, we'll find out. But uh, mentally, I'm good. I'm solid. Uh, no promises were made. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, that is, I've, I've seen the fighters. He's hot. Like, he likes to take his time, measure the distance. Like, you know, he's pretty comfortable. You know, you don't you don't get that when you fight me. I don't make him uncomfortable. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's Will Cummins. I was getting ready to fight Sergio Pettis coming up here at UFC 167 this Saturday night, MGM Grand Garden Arena. I'm Frank Trigg. You guys are listening to MMA Oddsbreaker. Will, I appreciate you coming on here late. I know you just got in town. It's a Tuesday night. You just walked in the door, and I appreciate taking a couple minutes with us. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you.